Thank God for another day's journey. He's been so good to us all. I see everybody look good this morning because they ate good on Thanksgiving. <laughs> and you know, when, you know when you eat a lot, you look good. Uh, so we all look good this morning. We thank God that we ate good. Uh, and then we made it. And we're not on that other side. We're on this side. Thank God. Thank God for another day's journey. And we all ought to be glad about it. Amen. 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 Jesus keep me. Come on, church. Scripture is coming from Psalms 138. The Lord a faithful God. Yes, he is. And it reads, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship for thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. In the day when I cried, thou answered me, and strengthened me with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt receive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy, shall, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. Again, that was Psalm 138. Amen. 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 Let's go to God in the word of prayer. Amen. The words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, Amen. my heart fixer, my mind regulator, Amen. my bridge over troubled water, Amen. food when I'm hungry, Water when I'm thirsty. Yes, yes. 
Lord, we come to you this morning, Lord, with thanksgiving in our heart. Realize, the Lord, that we need you and we can't get along without you. Realize, the Lord, it was you and nobody but you, Lord, that brought us thus far. Giving us a heart and a mind to call upon your name. Lord, because, Lord, we realize that you're the same God yesterday and today. Same God that us laid out last night and the same God that called us by name early this morning. And, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being God and God all by yourself and a God on our side. Heavenly Father, we ask you to continue to help us to be all you would have us to be in this, Son. Heavenly Father, we ask you to come into our hearts, Lord, and live your life through us, Lord, and hide us behind the cross where man will see all of you and none of us. Help us to be what you would have us to be, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Before we go any further, Lord, we ask you to forgive us from our sins, Lord. Cast our sins just as far as the east is to the west. Heavenly Father, we ask you to create in us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit, that we can continue to run this race before us. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being so good and so kind and so merciful to us, Lord. Lord, we know we haven't been the servant you called us to be, and neither have we kept all your commandments. But Lord, we ask you to look over all our faults and continue to supply with each and every last one of our needs. Lord, we know that we need you, Lord. We only got this far by grace, leaning and dependent on your everlasting arm. And Lord, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for everyone under the sound of my weak voice, Lord. Well, Lord, we know somebody had a mind to be out this morning and just couldn't make it. But that's all right, Lord, because I realize they got a God that they can call on, Lord. A God that will soothe that pain. A God that will regulate that high blood pressure, that sugar, Lord. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for these deacons, Lord, that standing, Lord. Lord, we ask you to have mercy on our pastor, Lord. We pray that he put a word in us, Lord, that as we go down from this place, that we can let this dying world know that you be us live in the heart of man. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we know you didn't have to do it, but Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We got so much to be thankful for, Lord. As we look around, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being so good to us, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for my journey. Lord, I Come on, y'all. That's old. <laughs> Lord, I Of the other deacons, we'd like to thank you for joining us for devotion this morning. We appreciate you and we love you. And I will turn the processions over to the full Amen. 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 God is good. And his mercy endures forever. I was listening. Deacon was talking about grace. Amen. Amen. The songwriter used to say, we come this far by grace. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his every word. He never failed me yet. All right, all right. And he said, oh, hallelujah. God is good, amen. And we're grateful for this opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord, uh, in the house of the Lord one more time. We're always in his presence, amen. Amen, amen, amen. The scripture tells us that we are to bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in our mouths, amen. Amen. Anybody got a continual praise, amen. Anybody got a praise in your mouth, amen? And I, I'm going to challenge you on today. Don't worry about who's sitting next to you, amen? Or who ain't sitting next to you, amen? Amen. We have something to praise him for, amen? Amen, amen. You got through another Thanksgiving day, amen? You ate all that you ate, probably got stuffed in full, amen? Amen. Went back, amen. Got stuffed in full again, amen? Went back, got stuffed in full again, amen? Amen. And we waddled in here this morning. Amen. 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 So God is good. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. I didn't get no phone calls this week. Come on. Amen. I didn't get no phone calls. Amen. I, I got a few in the hospital, but I didn't get no phone calls about, Pastor, can you come console the family? I didn't get no calls this week. That ought to be something to be thankful for. Amen, 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 amen. Every day, amen, is a day in the Lord that we ought to be praising him. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad to be here this morning. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad to see you this morning. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. We had some birthdays, amen. Dr. Goldman had a birthday. My nephew had a birthday. Sister Cammie had a birthday on yesterday. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And some of y'all got birthday coming up, or just left. Yeah. But we ought to be thanking the Lord, amen. Yeah. Amen, amen. Y'all sound like y'all might still have a little turkey in dressing in y'all this morning. Amen, amen, yeah. amen, amen. I, 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 I ain't gonna hurt you, amen. I ain't come to hurt nobody this morning, amen. I just want to bless the Lord, amen. When I think about how good God has been to me, when I think about how good God has been to me, when I think about how good God has been to me, I, I didn't say it had to be a whole lot of information. I said, when I think about, amen. Just get, and, 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 and now, put this in perspective. I said, when I think about, somebody couldn't think this morning, but when I think about the goodness of Jesus Christ and what he has done in my life, amen, I just want to say hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God. Amen. 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 When the enemy comes in like a flood, God will lift up a standard. Amen. Amen. Are you a standing lifter? Amen. Are you a standing lifter? Amen. Are you one that will lift up the standard? Amen. 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 We're grateful again. Uh, just a quick reminder, amen, and before we come to our praise and worship team, amen, uh, who will lead us in a selection this morning, amen. Uh, Psalms 116 is where we're from. Uh -huh. Psalms 116. Uh -huh. Psalms 116. So after our praise and worship team comes, amen, that's who you'll be listening to, amen. Uh, that's what I'll be preaching from. Just a reminder also that uh, we do have a, I, I told y'all, a post-Thanksgiving fast. Amen. At post Thanksgiving fast, seven days start tomorrow. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let you get through the night. Amen. Seven days start tomorrow and it will end, amen, on Monday morning. Amen. amen. Seven days. Amen. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Amen. I've got all of the details for the fast here. Amen. And we'll share those with you. Uh, I, I'm going to share it because somebody might be online and hear it as well. Amen. Uh, for those who are online who will hear it, you will actually hear it, amen, a week later. However, you can do your fast the following week. Amen. 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 Uh, but more importantly, we just want to make sure that we're praying as we are being called to do so uh, in this post-COVID. Uh, we got a lot of post-COVID challenges. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got inflation. Amen. Inflation. Amen. Inflation. Amen. Yes. No inflation. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, there, there are some mental challenges that are going forth as well That's in right. this season. That's amen. Right. A amen. So we want to be in prayer for those. We want to be in prayer, amen, for uh, church unity. Uh, we want to be in prayer for obedience to God's word. Yes. Let me say that again. Obedience to God's word. And then I want you to choose two things that you have personal that you want to pray about. Amen. Uh, real quickly, during the fast, you're going to refrain from fried, fast and fried food. Hello? Amen. 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 No churches, no Kentucky. Amen. A -a Amen. For refrain from fried, fried foods, you are allowed to eat any meats that are broad, baked, or smoked. You can eat any vegetables or fruits, as long as they're not fried, as well as fruit juices, fruit drinks, tea, and lemonade. No carbonated beverages. Uh, no candy or desserts. You may eat between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Amen. Amen. Fruit and vegetable snack is allowed between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. just in case you need to get something if you got to take medicine or what have you. There are no limitations on the amount of water. And here's the keys also. You are asked to pray each night at 7 p.m. for at least 15 minutes for those items that we've identified here, one through three. 
and then choose a 30-minute block each night, including Saturday and Sunday, in which you ask to study and reflect on the instructions in the following passage. passage Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Now, my Sunday school is you gotta you gotta lay it up because you can study your Sunday school lesson also every night, 30 minutes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, fast will start on November the 28th and will be observed until December the 5th. And there may be some again who are unable to adhere to all the guidelines and restrictions. So you use your best judgment if you need to eat outside of those designated times. I have some people who work opposite hours. So if you need to make an adjustment, do so. Also, there will be some who work nights, and if this is the case, again, adjust to a 7 p.m. to a 7 a.m. allotment and choose a 45-minute prayer study period that fits your schedule. Blessings. Amen. Amen. Uh, I do have this so you all can have one on the way out if you need any additional instruction or guidance. Uh, you can give me a call. Amen? Amen. 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 We'd like to welcome our visit this morning. God bless you, brother. Good to see you this morning. We thank you for coming. Amen. We are grateful uh, to God for all that he continues to do. Again, uh, obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Amen. Uh, and when we do pray this afternoon, uh, we want to be in prayer for the Skinner family. Uh, loss of a loved one, Gregory Hall, uh, uh, who's in uh, Cook County Hospital, and then Mother Louise Simpkins, who's in St. Louis. And these are all family members of Sister Hurst. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when we do pray going out, we want to make sure that we keep them in our prayers and even pray while we're in service. Amen? Amen. 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 I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to make y'all down for the fans. Amen. Amen. Let's go and get it back on up. Amen. Amen. Let's give our praise and worship team a hand as they come. Amen. Y'all help them out. Amen.
you serve a mighty God. Yeah, mighty Jesus. And God's mercy continues. Yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. Amen. Follow us all the days of our lives. How many feel blessed today? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How, many, how many got this love praise and thank you? Just bell down one more hallelujah. Amen.
one more time, I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Let us pray. Most kind and gracious Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for another Sunday morning. Yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. One in which, Lord, we, Lord, we didn't walk in under our own power. Yes, oh God. But it's because of the strength, Lord, that you've provided that allowed us, Master, to walk into the sanctuary one more time. Lord, I don't know what everyone had to deal with over the course of this week. Yes, oh God. I can only, Lord, speak for my own self. Yes, and understand and know, Father, that if it had not been for you, oh, yes. if oh, it yes. had not been for you, oh, Lord, yes. if it had not been for your oh, power, yes. if it had not been for your authority, if it had not been for your mercy, if it had yes, not been God. for your grace, Woo. Lord, I can truly say I don't know where I would be. Yeah. I, I thank you on this morning, Father, for this opportunity to stand before, Lord, your people, your sheep, Father, and uh, serve as an under-shepherd. Uh, Lord, that will be able, Lord, to express what you have desired for me to express with them all today. Yeah. Lord, I pray now that their hearts and their ears are open, Lord, to receive your word on today. Yes, oh God. Well, Lord, I realize, Master, that, Lord, only what we do for Christ will matter. Yes, yes. And, Lord, we know, Father, that your word is, is important. Your word is special. Your word, Father, is life-bringing. It's life-changing, Lord. It, it enhances us, Lord. It endows us. It prepares us. And, and Lord, I'm praying now that we on today, Father, have a more serious, Lord, uh, understanding of what the Word is capable well, of. Well, well. Uh, that, Lord, it would align us, Father, to be more obedient to it. Uh, and that, Lord, as we operate in obedience, Father, as your righteousness comes forth, Master, as we live in your word, uh, that, Lord, that you will show us some things, Father, that will transform our lives, Father. Uh, that, Lord, those things that challenged us before, Father, though, though they may still be present, uh, they don't challenge us the same way because we realize, Lord, that our strength is not in us, but it is in you. I thank you on today, Father, for your endowed word, Father. For I realize, Master, that your word, Lord, uh, uh, can do all things but fail, Father. I, I thank you, Father, that you shared even with the woman at the well. That, Lord, that you would put in her uh, a spring of water that will raise up, Father, in times of need. Your word. We thank you, Father, that, Lord, uh, we have some word, Father. But we're praying now, Father, that uh, we be more committed to understanding and learning more of your word. And it may uh, bring us, Father, to higher heights, Master, that the power and authority that you left us, Father, that we'll be able to exercise it in such a way, Father, that we can still have demons troubling and Lord, that we can pray out some stuff. And Lord, that we can move some mountains, Lord. That Lord, that Lord, that we were able, Father, to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Lord, we thank you right now, Father, for we realize, Lord, that Lord, we, we, we are not all that we should be, Father. But sometimes leave us, Lord, in an helpless situation, Lord. But I pray now in the name of Jesus, Father, that you will clothe us, Master, in our bright mind, Father. Clothe us, Lord. And the power that, Lord, you will let us, Lord, clothe us in the opportunity, Father, that we may stand and speak those things that they are. Lord, I pray and, and ask you, Lord, to surround me, Father, with believers. Lord, I, I pray that you surround me, Father, with individuals, Master, who, who Lord, have an unshakable faith. That, Lord, regardless of what come their way, Father, they won't shiver, they won't quiver, they won't run, but they'll stand still and seek you, Lord. But Lord, we know, Father, that I, 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 this war that we're fighting, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah. Father, we're dealing with principalities, Lord. Yeah. We're dealing with high uh, authority and high places, Lord. Yeah. We're dealing, Father, with spiritual witness, yeah. Lord. We're dealing with a dark world, Lord. We're dealing, Father, with an enemy, Father, yeah. who's crafty, who's scheming. Lord. And we just pray now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you draw out of us, Lord, anything that's not like you. Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, that we may be, Father, geared up and ready. Right. Root it up and suit it up, Father, yeah, for, for yeah, war. Yeah, yeah. The Lord, that the victory that we already have, yeah, Master, yeah. that we can go into battle, Father, already knowing that we're more than comfortable yeah, in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I thank you. Thank you Lord. I thank you in advance. Because, yeah, yeah. Lord, I believe your word every yeah, bit of it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just trusting and believing, Father, that, Lord, there's mountains that need to be moved. Yeah. But it's going to be our faith beside the grain of a mustard seed. Yeah, so Yes, Lord, that will make the move, Master, and Lord, we'll be able to give you the glory. We thank you. We glorify you. It's in Jesus Christ, all the righteous name, we pray and give you thanks. Let every heart say amen. 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 And amen again. Amen. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Uh, 
Uh, Psalm 116, 14, may the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. And this week, amen, as we still talk about our eight spiritual uh, uh, habits to spiritual healthiness, amen, today's lesson or today's topic is obey him. Amen. 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 If you are in our Sunday school uh, uh, hour on most Sundays, amen, you, you may not recognize it as of yet, but I'm going to share with you that I typically throw out a little cookie to let you know, amen, what I'm going to preach about on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and I do that, amen, to just see if there's anybody really listening. Hey, amen. Amen. Because sometimes so much can be going on, Sister Rashida, that we, we don't always hear. Uh, we hear, but we're not listening. Uh, and that's the question that we really want to ask ourselves today, today, amen, is are we really listening to God or do we only just hear him? Uh, uh, if we're listening, amen, we're listening with this intent, that word hearkening, with an intent of obeying uh, so that we may get the full benefits of being in right fellowship with God. However, if we are only hearing, we only hear what we want to hear. Yeah. And, and sometimes what that does is it puts us at a disadvantage, amen, because we're only queuing in for the things that we really want to hear for ourselves. Amen, amen, amen. I, I, I would imagine, amen, Sister Carol, with, with Christmas right on the cuff, everybody, amen, want to hear what they might get. Yeah. But ain't nobody listening for what they need to give. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, everybody may hear, amen, amen, that, 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 that oh, I like this and uh, I'll get you that. But are they really listening, amen, for the opportunity, amen, to be able to give, amen? You do know that it is better to give than to have up. To receive, Amen. As we as we as 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 we look, uh, when when Paul or Saul demonstrated a, an inability uh, to follow the Lord, Amen. God told Samuel, He said, Samuel, I, I rejected Saul, and, and He tells him that uh, uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, and the standard that we're talking about is expressed by God. It provides this insight to the priority that God places on obedience. When He said this, uh, uh, He shared with uh, Saul. He said. He said, he said, Samuel, I, I, I know that he went, and I, I know that I, 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 he, he captured the king. And I know, but I had told him to kill everybody. He said, I, I told him to get rid of everything. And, and so what he comes back with is, is this thing of, of that's, that's indifferent to what I instructed him. And as a result of that, amen, I, I, I have dismissed Saul as the king. And, and as a result of me dismissing Saul as the king, you will have to get over it, Samuel, because I'm going to pick somebody else. Uh -huh. uh, so obedience in and of itself requires us to stick, amen, to what we know is right, even when outside influences try to make the, uh, 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 the practice seem like it's a major tag. When it seems like what I'm doing is right, there's somebody going to come along and try to make you think what you're doing is out of order. But but you got to make up in your mind is I'm going to do right irregardless of what amen. is going on. I'll I give you a perfect example, right. Sister Kevin. I know you listening to me. Amen. Right. Uh, uh, on, on Wednesday night, Malachi and myself, I almost said Pastor Malachi. I mean, Malachi and myself, we went to Target. Amen. 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 And, and I walked in Target and I got the items that I needed. That was Tuesday night. I walked in Target, got the items that I needed. Uh, and when I got out of Target, Malachi said, Daddy, this is still in the basket. It was a 79 cent uh, 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 vanilla, uh, 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 imitation vanilla uh, uh, bottle. Right. 79 cent. 79 cent. Uh -huh. 79 cent. Uh -huh. 79 cent. I said, Malachi, I don't see it on the, uh, uh, I don't see it on the receipt. He said, Dad, I don't see it on the receipt either. I said, I don't want to go back in this store. So I said, I'm going to ball up a dollar and I'm going to just throw it in the Target parking lot. Then I said, no, because I got to teach Malachi a person. So I said, Malachi, just wait right here. I went back in. I said, ma'am, I don't see this on the receipt. 79 cents. 79 cents. I said, I, I don't see it. She said, sir, it ain't on there. I said, can you bring it up? She looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> you done walked out the store, you done got out the store and all that, and you decided that you don't want, I, I said, ma'am, I'm going to pay for this, right. because what I don't need to happen is something else happen. That's right. That's right. 
over this 79 cents. That's right. That's right. I, I'm trying to help somebody because somebody that walked out with some bottles. Yeah. Somebody that walked out with a case of pop and forgot to pay for it. Well, well, hey, man, you said, well, that's their loss. <laughs> uh, your blessing. Mm. Everything that's a blessing or seems like a blessing ain't a blessing. I, I'm sharing that with you, amen, because the, uh, what, what, what we have to do is we got to do right, even when it does not seem like it is necessary or important or proper for us to do so, amen. See, the world, the world needs to see, Sister Donna, uh, 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 believers that do what they say and say what they mean. Regardless, amen, of what it might cost them, regardless, amen, of what comes their way. What about showing this greater appreciation to God for his mighty work? I did that because I thank God for every blessing. And every blessing. I thank God for every blessing. I thank God for every blessing. I thank God for every blessing. I'm going to show my Okay, I just got hot now. I got hot because, 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 let, let me show you how this reflects, amen? Amen. I was obedient to go back and pay the 79 cents. Uh -huh. Then I got a $100 blessing later that week. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm, I'm sitting up hands. I'm sitting up praying. Some, some, somebody, amen. Amen. God is trying to show you that all you got to do is obey him. Right. And if you obey him on some small stuff, God will open up doors that no man can close. You'll be sitting around trying to figure out, why am I blessed over here? Why am I not blessed over here? Why am I not blessed over here? Because you were thankful in the small thing. You were obedient in the small thing. Yes, yes, oh God. Yes, oh God. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Lord, he's a witness. He know I'm not mine. I got people right here know I'm not mine. Amen. I'm just showing you how good God is when we obey him. Yeah. Having previously spoken about making a commitment to the Lord, we remember the psalmist, the psalmist the last few weeks, we've been talking about the psalmist, and, and the psalmist has been talking about how, how, he, how he had this great belief in God because of how God has been moving in his life and moving in his life. He, he talked about how he cried out. And, and, and as a result of him crying out, it reaped him some benefits that he did not supposed to have. But because of him crying out to the Lord, God blessed him. God pulled him out of the mockery, mockery clay. God pulled him out the pits of hell. He was about to die. He said, I was almost dead, but God pulled me out. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said and then he goes on and says, as a result of that, what should I render unto the Lord? He said, I'm going to follow God all the days of my life. Because I realized that when I was a dope head, I was a this head. When I was a death head, when I was a homemonger, when I was a doubter, when I was a liar, when I was a stealer, when I was a cheater, when I was all that, God covered me. He said, he said, so what should I render to him? Because he pulled me out. He said, he said, he said, he said, I have made a commitment in my mouth and in my heart that as a result of what God has done for me, I am now going to make sure that I give him everything that he is deserving of. So now he says, I'm going to keep my vows. Vows talking about promises. Vows talking about a commitment being made. When I make a vow and I keep it, it's a sign of obedience and discipline. Because what happens is that I don't have to keep the vow. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. But because I said I'm going to do so, then I'm obedient to not only God's word, but my word. And as a result of that, I have to discipline myself. And you know how easy it is to walk away from a promise? But when you've engaged every part of what you said you were going to do, you can't go no further. You have to now say, I've done what I said I could do. And what the psalmist is saying is that I'm going to give God the best that I got while I got it because I may not always have. Deuteronomy 23, 21, 23 says that when, when thou shalt when, when thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it, but the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. In other words, I make a vow, I don't 
keep it to God, then God said, sin. Yes. 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 But if thou wilt forbear to buy, it shall be no sin in thee. Yes. That which is done out of thy lips, thou shalt keep and perform, even a free will offering, according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. Yes. In other words, he said, if you're going to tell me you're going to love me, then love me like you say you're going to love me. If you're going to tell me you're going to do it, then do what you say you're going to do. If you're going to praise me like you say you're going to praise me, then praise me and do what you He said, give it to me because you said it. Yes, 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 yes. Then we got to have a wedding. We said, to death do us part. This is Carol and I. Amen. Amen. So I got, I got to live up to the vow. Right. He said, for better or for worse. Amen. So you got to live up to the vow. Yeah. All right. All right. Hey, hey, man, we go to a job. We say, I work my seven, my five hours, or my eight hours, and I'm going to do You got to work the full eight hours. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I got somebody. Somebody said, yes, you got to be in trouble. Amen. 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 The vow, amen, the promise, amen, it is saying that I'm going to be obedient to, first of all, what I said I'm going to do. But more important, as we talk about as believers, I'm being obedient unto God. So point number one I want to share with you from this is if we truly love the Lord, we will do what he says and give in to him. What if God woke you up this morning Come on now. and said, I don't want you to go nowhere else but church. I want you to just come to Greenwood and I want you to stay here for 24 hours. And just praise me. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. How many would be willing to do that? Don't raise your hand too quick. I want to make sure. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm talking about without even now, if he just said in your spirit, I just want you to sit there. Because sometimes God is going to ask you to do something that is unorthodox because you're dealing with some unorthodox situations. That's why we call him the fast, amen. I only did it seven days, amen, because I do believe that, that, that God can complete a thing in seven days. Yeah, yes, he amen. And what he led me to is just go seven, just go seven. You got to do 21, you got to, because if people going to be committed, they're going to be committed with the seven, amen. Right, right. Amen. So, so if they're going to be committed wholeheartedly with the seven, they'll do the seven and they'll do it wholeheartedly because what they realize is that sometimes I'm not fasting for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm fasting for the situations, and because I'm fasting for the situation, I'm interceding for somebody else. And when I'm interceding for somebody else, God is making a way for somebody else through my sacrifice. And if God makes a way for somebody else through my sacrifice, then I'm just believing that at some point, when I need something, God's going to make a way for me. So, 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 so what this means is that we're giving in to God with everything we got. I'm pouring out myself. I'm giving myself away. I'm letting God use me the way that God desires to use me without me having input to how he do it. Amen. Amen. You know how we act sometimes. Somebody asks you to do something, you got to put conditions on it. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. God said, I don't want no conditions. Because what I'm asking you to do is going to take wholeheartedness. Joshua tells them in 22.5, he said, But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love your God and to walk in all his ways. Right. He said, this is all Moses told y'all the whole time. Love God and walk in his ways. Remember, there was a whole generation or two that had to die out because they couldn't walk in God's way and follow his word. Yeah. Do you want to forfeit your blessings? Anybody? Can't afford it, can't afford it. It's too pricey. Yeah. It's too costly. If you forfeit what God has for you, then what you're doing is you're putting yourself always in a deficit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to be in a deficit. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't want y'all to be in a deficit. So, so I, I'm, I'm teaching as he's telling me to teach because God is saying there is a requirement that is upon us now that is different than any other time that we've been on here. Yeah. Mm. He says, if we truly love the Lord, we do what he says and give it to him, choosing to not only understand God's commandments, but to keep them. In other words, holding them firmly into our importance uh, as it deals with our past, present, and future, as John would explain in John 14, where he said to John, John said, Jesus says, Jesus says to them, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
Now this was after he explained that my father is the husband and I was what? The true vine. He said, and the true vine, amen, it is one that is attached and the branches are attached to the true vine. The true vine is rooted in the righteous, righteousness of God. And as a result of that, if I'm attached to him, then I should operate in righteousness. Yeah, yeah. But then he said, if you abide in me, I'll abide in you. Yeah. But then he moves down and says that if you love me, keep my commandments. Y'all yeah. know how y'all do. You love me, you'll buy me this. Uh, if you love me, you'll take me here. Conditions. If you love conditions, amen. <laughs> Jesus is saying this from a perspective of this ain't a condition, this is a promise. Yes. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments and watch what's gonna happen when it comes to fruition. Because here's the deal. Everybody else that tells you something and tells you to put a condition on it, they can change their mind. That's right, that's right. But Jesus does not change his mind because he keeps his promises. All right. yeah. He's a yeah. promise keeper. Yeah. Yeah. Promise keeper. He said, he said, I, I, if I make a vow, you can best believe I'm going to keep up to my vow. Amen. He said, but what I'm trying to show y'all is the importance of being an example. So he's an example of one who keeps vows so that we understand the importance of vows and we learn how to keep vows. That's why the service is sitting there kicking out. He said, man, I'm going to keep my vow because I know what it was like. He said, I was basically in hell on earth. Yeah. 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 Ever felt like that? Yes. 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 Ever felt that pressure yes. so high? You're like, boy, this is, I, if, if this is hell, then I sure don't want to go there. Amen. Amen. He said, I was in a bad place. Yes. That's what it said. Come on, Reverend. So I was in a bad, bad place. Yeah. <laughs> she, was, she was in a bad place. Uh -huh. she, said, but she said, but something happened. Yeah. And, and, and she said it was another individual, but I'm saying for us, what happened was we was in bad places and the Lord stepped in. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord kicked down doors. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, it was very similar to what David said. The, 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 Lord, the Lord, the enemy had us in his mouth. Uh -huh. And God came along and pulled us out of his mouth. Because he almost had us down. Yeah. And, 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 and he won't choke on us, y'all. He can take all of us down at the same time, but because of who God is, he can't digest it very well. My Lord. Yeah. He said he had to get him out. And God pulled us out of his mouth right in the nick of time. I hear John echo on this again in 2 John 1 and 6 where he said, and this is love, that we walk after his commandments. So if I love God, I'm going to walk after his commandments. Walk after means I'm going to put myself in a position that I can always do what God say do. All right, all right. Which will sometimes require you to walk away from some things that you yeah. think you ought to be holding on to. Yeah. Right. Yes. Anybody got some things you need to give away? All right. Yes. All right. Amen, amen, amen. You know we do spring cleaning in the spring, but you do know that you have to do some fall cleaning also. Yeah. And some winter cleaning, amen. Yeah. It's some stuff that with some baggage, amen. Anybody got some baggage? All right. Do I have any bag ladies or bag men in the house? Walking around with some stuff, baggage that you don't really need no more. Amen. Come on, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody. Amen. Because today is a release day. Yeah. You can release that stuff right now. You ain't got to hold on to the baggage of your past, your traumas of your past. That stuff, that's what, do you, you know what the enemy do? The enemy use your trauma to keep you trapped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he uses the very things that you think traumatize you uh -huh. to keep you stuck in that moment. And the only thing that you can ever think about is what it was like when you was there and cannot see the fullness of what God is doing in your life in the right now, so you stay there. Uh -huh. That's why this morning we was studying the Bible and it talked about putting on the full armor of God. Yes, yes. He said, he said, because what you got to understand is that the enemy going to come in every part of you. He comes at your head. He comes at your throat. He comes at your chest. He comes at your feet, because if he can get you to stop walking, that's right, that's right. If he can get you to stop running, if he can get you to stop standing, hallelujah. If he can get you to start thinking wrong, that's why you gotta put on the helmet of salvation. Because you gotta know what you're walking in. You gotta know that I am saved and I'm saved by grace. Amen. And it's not because of my works, because I can't work myself into none of this. But because of grace, I'm saved. And as a right. result of my grace, grace is sufficient. It's just certain grace is sufficient. I'm going to praise God for grace. And since he gave me grace, I already know that mercy is followed also. So I ain't got to worry about nothing because he got me covered. Just like he had him covered out in the wilderness. Remember, he had a pillar of fire and he had this going on. So he said, I always got you covered if you let me. I problem is that we 
me take the covers off. I guess y'all listening. God's word has been made clear. And what happens is that our love for him sets the stage. So if I love him, I'm going to obey him. Amen. I love Sister Carol. Amen. So Sister Carol said, Pastor, don't be acting crazy. I said, baby, I love you. Don't even be acting crazy. Amen. I, I ain't got nowhere else to go but go to work and come home. Right. Amen. I ain't got nowhere else to be going. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm trying to help somebody. Yes, yes, if yes. You me, you, if you yes. help me, then you're going to keep the vow. You ain't got to worry about going nowhere else. Amen. I ain't got nothing else to do with it. Nothing else out in the world for me. Hallelujah. Tell you this, a neighbor, just go to work, come to church, and go home. If you do those things, you sure ain't going to have a whole lot of other stuff bothering you and bothering you down. Amen. Amen. It's all this other extracurricular stuff that gets folks in trouble. Amen. That's what that, that, that he said. I, I, I will what? I, I'm going to obey him. That's what the Sabbath, the Sabbath said. I tried all that other stuff. Something said I had traps over here. <laughs> he said I had mess over here. I was dimming over here. I was dabbing over there. He said, but what happened was the Lord didn't let all that stuff kill me. That's right. Amen. 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 I listened to Deacon this morning. Deacon said when he went dancing, they made good dancing tennis shoes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. On the flip side, I couldn't play basketball in church shoes. Amen. <laughs> you, ever, you ever seen somebody try to do that? No. Rendered. To them who by pay 
patient continence in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. He said, if you do what God say do, this is what Paul said, listen, in seven, he said, to them who are patient, and who continue to do it the way that God wants you to be doing it, and you give him glory and honor, and you operate the way that you're supposed to, then you will have immortality because you'll have eternal life yeah. with the Father. Yeah. Now, here's what I need you to understand. There is an immortality in hell. Because yeah. you're going to live there forever, too. Amen. He said, he said, he said, but then he goes to eight, and he says, but. But is a conjunction word, meaning that whatever I'm going to say after but don't pertain to what I said before. All right, he said, but unto them that are contentious. You know what that means? Like to get in trouble. Like to keep stuff up. Uh -huh. Messy people. Yeah. Messy. Yeah. <laughs> Turn your neck and say, David, don't be messy. Don't be messy. Be messy. Amen, amen, amen. But, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also to the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, but there is no respect of persons with God. In other words, you act. Anybody remember the blue light special at Kmart? Yeah. <laughs> you remember you walk through Kmart and you go through Kmart and, and, and they also have like a deli counter where they have them big old sandwiches. They're like four or five of them, amen. But do you know what the rule was when you walked in Kmart? Right. Don't walk away. Because the worst thing you want is for them to come over the line and say, Mr. Carroll, we got Malachi up here. Oh, see, y'all mama that y'all run all over the stuff. <laughs> right. Worst thing you wanted was for you to have to get corrected. Because parents back then correct you on spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call you on that speaker. Your mama might not have a belt, but she's going to buy one. Right there. She looks like she can find. Because they probably will tear it up on you in the store. And you know what people do? People do this. They turn their head walking away. Now, Everybody can because everybody want to get hits. And likes, yeah. And likes. And this and that. But I'm so glad for my hits. Yeah, I know that's right. And I'm glad for the dislikes. Yeah, yeah. Because they kept me out of some stuff that I could have yeah. been into. That's right. And as a result of that, I am here today and can share with you that God is good. Yeah. And his mercy can do it forever. The soundest confirmation of his desire to be obedient and keep his vows is highlighted by him wanting others to know it. He says, I'm going to make my vows, but I'm not only just going to make them, but I'm going to make them in front of other people. Uh -huh. I'm going to keep my vow in the presence of other people. What he's saying is, you got to be a believer wherever you go. That's right. That's right. And it don't change because you come around family. It don't change just because you came to church. That's right. See, what you do at church, you ought to do at home. Yeah, that's right. What you do at church, you ought to do at work. That's right. That's right. You know how you do at church? You ought to be doing that in the grocery store? Yeah. When the line is on? Yeah. And you try to get out of there? Yeah. And they won't open up another aisle? Yeah. And you read? <laughs> And you ready to let somebody know that I, I've been standing here for 25 minutes? <laughs> yes. Stuff just set it off. Pop, pop, pop. I'm in there. Amen. And, 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 and <laughs> so we, we have to be mindful that, that, that you got to be a genuinely Christian everywhere you go. He's still working on me. He working on us all. Yeah, yeah. He working on us all. That's why he got these kind of lessons for us because he's trying to teach us that we ain't arrived yet. Amen. Amen. See, anything that I've mentioned and you still had a uh, you had a you had a mm about it. You still working. He's still working on you on that. Amen. A amen. If you saying, Pastor, come on, we ready to go because the game's gonna get started. He's still working on you too. Because he's working on your patience. Amen. A amen. 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 Only what you do for Christ. Well, last. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I don't care how many touchdowns Mahomes throw. Amen. It will not take you to heaven. 
Dosey. 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 My job as a pastor is to teach you what thus says the Lord. Yes. I have to lay it out practically. I lay it out plainly so that you can clearly understand it. Uh, I don't believe that God would send the word out and then it comes back void. Yes, so right. there's somebody here that has heard what thus says the Lord, and they understand that there's times when I have not been obedient. That's right. And my obedience had consequences that came along with it. But today you can start anew. Right. You can say today I'm going to make a commitment of vow that I'm going to live in righteousness. That's right. And my righteousness does not just start when I walk in Greenwood. That's right. My righteousness is an everyday righteousness. Because I tell you, I, I, I'm speaking on my behalf. I get phone calls at work. And why are they calling me today? I get there. Yeah. Then I say, Lord, thank you for the job. Yeah, 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 yeah. It puts it back in perspective, Sister Thomas. Because when you get back in perspective and you start thinking about if I if they didn't call, then I would have a, I would, there would be no need for me to be at the job. That's right. That's right. And, and then when you see people who say, I haven't seen you in a while, they're like, oh, you ain't been in a while. What's going on? How you doing? I, you start saying, well, maybe I thought I was invisible. Well, well. Anybody ever felt invisible? Yes, sir. You just thought you just go to work? Nobody see you? But you don't know what difference you make on the job? Some of y'all have made more difference on the job than you ever would believe. More than you'll ever make in church. Because mm -mm. your light shines there. Yeah, 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 that's true. See, it's one thing when you try to make your light shine. It's another thing when your light just shines. Yeah, that's right, yeah, that's right, that's right. See, unfortunately, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going. And unfortunately, sometimes we come to church on Sunday and we make our light shine. It's when you're outside of the church that's that right. you're a true life. Right. Right. And so the world needs to see you in your genuine, authentic self. That's it. Because that's where you drawing people to Christ. Amen. See, we all in church together, so we all ought to be here. That's right. We all ought to be praising the Lord, raising our hand. Amen. Not waiting on Pastor say, raise your hand and say hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We all ought to be shouting when we realize because yes. we all yes. are gone. We, 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 we was goners, y'all. Yeah. We was goners. Yeah. But God stepped in yes, and changed the trajectory of your life. Yeah, yeah. So that now you have enough sense to know that I need to be here yes. because of what God has done in my life. That's what the psalmist, the psalmist came to realization. Everything that I did prior to, to God stepping in was a joke. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, God stepped in. He said, oh, this is what life is really about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you ain't kicked it until you start kicking it with you. Yes, you ain't been to a party until you've been to a Holy Ghost party. Right. Yeah. You ain't found joy until you stand in the presence of the Lord, who is the fullness of joy. Right. See, I, 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 this, this should not be hard for us when we think about how good he's been. Yes, yes. that's Lord. right, that's right. Yes. Two and a half years, pandemic. You know what I just heard this morning? China might be getting ready to shut back down. Mm -hmm. So people run around thinking it's all gone. But here's what the enemy says. The enemy says, I'm going to do this. And the Lord said, they didn't learn nothing. So you touch their bodies, just don't touch their souls. That's right. But they ain't learned nothing. Because they tried to go right back to the same stuff they were doing before they left. He said, I have created a new season. Yes, he did. And because of the new season, you have to operate in a new season, but you're going to have to release some old season stuff. Amen. I, don't, don't mind me. Amen. I, I see a lot of stuff. I just saw something flashing out there, so I'm just trying to see what it was. Amen. I, I think it's just the curtain. Amen. But it's all right. Amen. 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 Because sometimes we 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 asleep and we ain't seeing what's going on. That's right. And the enemy just come in. The Bible says he will sow tears. Yeah. And when he sows tears, he can turn. You don't even see it coming. And then all of a sudden, it just pop up. And you be trying to figure out where did it come from? Because we were not paying attention. That's right. That's right. And the enemy is trying to, to make us attention deficit. That's 
in the presence of all the stuff that's going on. Because if I can get you to focus on inflation, I can get you to focus on COVID, I can get you to focus. He said, you start focusing on all that stuff, you ain't going to focus on your soul. That's right. Because you're going to always be running around, I got to pay this, I can't pay that, I can't pay that. The Bible said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will what? Continue to be in my mouth. David said this. He said, one thing I've never seen, the righteous forsaken. Yes. No, his seed bad for bread. Let me help you. Y'all his seed. That's right. So if you his seed, it don't matter how low your cupboard get, you will be like a woman that's there fast who went back into the barrel. Yeah. And every time that she went in the barrel, there was something yeah. in the barrel. Yeah. I'm just trying to help somebody understand. Don't be defeated by what the enemy is showing you. Because God has already told you who you are. We are more than conquerors. And how did he solidify that? Over 2,000 years ago, he sent his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus come. Jesus makes himself of no reputation. He died on Calvary's cross. He shed his blood for the remission of our sin. God has forgiven us as a result of Jesus' act. Jesus has taken us off the cross. He's buried in a borrowed tomb. He stays there all day Friday. stays there all day Saturday. Early Sunday morning, Jesus gets up. When he gets up, he gets up with all power in his hand. The power to be able to defeat anything that you face with, that you are up against, that comes up against you. And he ascends into heaven, sits on the right hand of the Father. He makes intercession for us. He's pleading on our behalf. One day he's coming back. But when he comes back, he's coming back for a church, not a building. Yeah. But a believers, a, a baptized body of believers who understand that he's coming back to save them. Oh, he's coming back to retrieve them. He's oh, coming back to take them home. And there ain't nothing like going home. Yeah. Oh, yes, so we'll wake up one morning and he'll say, come on, y'all. And here we are. We are in the heaven. And he can say what? Serving well done. Uh -huh. That's what I'm waiting on. Yes, oh God. Amen, amen. But I got some stuff I need to finish up here. That's right, that's right. So know this, you ain't going nowhere until you finish the work here. Amen. And when God gets ready, amen, then he'll do what he want to do. But that's his business. That's his business. Deacon Willis used to tell me that all the time. He said, brother, I got nothing to do with that. That's God's business. And that's what we have to understand. That God has his own business. Amen. Yes. So stand spiritually healthy will not come without some direct and often personal attacks. You're going to be attacked. Uh -huh. yeah. You're going to be attacked. Right. Yeah. You're going to be attacked. Yes. Yeah. You're going to be attacked. Yeah. Think it's not strange. You're going to be attacked. Uh, Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you're going to be attacked. Right. It's part of the wear and tear of being a Christian. Right. You're going to get attacked. Yeah. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And why am I worried about it? Because I'm putting no thought for tomorrow. Whatever attack comes from me, I have to keep in perspective that they're not attacking me. That's right, that's right. The attack is not on me. The attack is not on you. They're attacking God. And you're just a vessel. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual weakness in high places. The enemy is busy, Mother Wright. He's busy. Yes, he Yes. He's busy. Yes. He's busy. He's busy. Tell me, he's busy. He's, 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 he's busy. He's trying to disrupt everything that he can. Amen. But the Lord sits on the throne. And he sits in power. He sits in majesty. He sits in might. And whatever it is that you stand in need of, I encourage you today, talk to God about it. Say, Lord, help me so that I can be a help to somebody. Amen. 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 Why do we do that? Why are we walking? Why do we keep fighting? Because the odds are stacked against the enemy. Because victory has already been won. Tell your neighbors, you victorious. So walk in victory. Now this time, say it like you really mean it. Now say it with some power. You are important. You got to tell people you are victorious and walk in victory. Why are we walking in victory? Because Jesus already has obtained victory on Calvary. Amen. Give the Lord a hand for it. someone, amen, even here or online who has heard the word of God, made up in their mind that 
uh, they are in a position now that they want to give God a little bit more of themselves. Uh, I would encourage you to give a little bit more than a little, but to give a lot, uh, because it's going to benefit you uh, to the fullest by doing so. Amen. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask for right, yes, yes. according to the power that worketh in us. Will you come on today? Come by letter. Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Will you come on today? Will there be one? Will you come? Will you come on today? Will there be one? Come by letter. Christian experience, kind of candidate for baptism. Will there be one? Will you come?